Hello, Matthew Bell here. Today I want to continue a discussion of retirement vehicles and we're going to be talking about the Roth IRA. So a Roth IRA is an individual retirement account or retirement annuity that is funded with after-tax or post-tax dollars up to specified IRS limitations and we'll get into that more in a minute. Now by after-tax or post-tax contribution, I mean that you do not get a deduction on the amount that you contribute into your Roth IRA. So this is different from contributions that you might make to your traditional IRA or to your 401k or other similar uh, employer-sponsored qualified uh, retirement accounts. But even though the contribution is not deductible, the benefit of the Roth IRA is that if the Roth has been open for five years and the person withdrawing the funds is at least 59 and a half, then you actually get the distribution without having to pay tax. So the distribution is tax-free. That means that all of the earnings that had accrued tax deferred you don't pay tax on those either. Now there are limitations, uh, number one, on how much money you can put into a Roth IRA. So for example, I am uh, recording this in 2019, there are annual limits and in this year the contribution limit for Roth IRAs is $6,000 if you are younger than 50 and if you're over 50 you can put in an additional thousand bringing the total contribution up to 7,000. Now there are also limitations on how much you can make and still put money into a Roth IRA. So if you are single or if you are filing head of household, then your income limit is $122,000. Now between $122,000 and $137,000, there's a kind of a phase out uh, period, what they call it, where you can contribute but you can contribute only at a reduced amount. So if you make $122,000 or less as a single filer or as filing head of household, then you can make up to $122,000 and you can make a full contribution of six or 7000 to your Roth IRA. If you make over $122,000, then you have to make a reduced contribution all the way up to $137,000 of income at which point you cannot no longer contribute to a Roth IRA, at, at least not of this kind. Now for married filers, the income limitations are a little bit different. So in the year, again, this is specific to year. So depending on when you're viewing this video, uh, you are gonna wanna check with a tax preparer or with your plan administrator or whoever is, uh, is, uh, is your communication expert on this uh, particular um, uh, vehicle. But the income limitations in the year 2019 are $193,000 if you are married filing jointly. And again, that is an income limitation for the full Roth contribution amount of six or 7,000 as we just discussed, depending on your age. Now after 193,000, but before 203,000, again, you have that phase out period where you can make a contribution, but it will be a reduced amount over the full uh, available amount for uh, making a contribution to the Roth. And then after 203,000 of income, you are ineligible to contribute uh, to a Roth IRA. Now there is something called a uh, Roth conversion or sometimes it's referred to as a backdoor Roth and the idea here is that you take an instrument like a traditional IRA or a 401k and then you convert that account into or you pull funds out of it and you convert into a Roth. Um, there are no income or contribution limits in terms of a Roth conversion so sometimes people who cannot make uh, contributions to a Roth IRA directly will make contributions instead into, a, into an IRA or into their 401k and then they'll perform this Roth conversion in order to obtain uh, some kind of uh, the, the, the kind of results that the Roth is able to provide. Namely, again, uh, if the Roth has been open for five years and you're over 59 and a half, then you get the distributions, including the earnings tax free. Now you'll notice that the annual contribution limits for the uh, Roth and for the traditional IRA are exactly the same. And in fact, they are cumulative limits. So you can only contribute uh, a total of six or 7,000 depending on your age. And again, taking into consideration the, uh, the caveats regarding income limitation, you can only contribute up to the income limits into either a traditional IRA or a Roth. Now, one benefit of the Roth is that since you are putting in post-tax dollars, that is to say, since you are not getting a deduction on the amount you contribute, you're actually at liberty 
to withdraw your contribution at any time and for any reason. So if you put 10000 into a Roth over a period of time and for some reason you have need of, uh, of that 10000 you can you can take it out. It's uh, recovering the cost basis and you're able to get back the amount you put in and you don't owe any tax and you're not penalized for that. Now, it may not be a good idea uh, to do it. Uh, there's oftentimes what people don't think about is in removing money from a retirement vehicle, number one, if that vehicle, that vehicle is earmarked for your retirement and if you uh, take money out of it, then you are uh, possibly jeopardizing your retirement plan, number one. Uh, number two, there's what's called an opportunity cost. So if you are taking 10000 out of a retirement plan, um, depending on how the, uh, f how the uh, money is invested, maybe it's in a, in a fixed annuity or perhaps it's invested in some market instrument, then you are also losing out on the ability of that money that you withdraw to make additional money, and that's sometimes referred to as an opportunity cost. So you are losing out on the money-making potential of whatever money you withdraw. Now, there's also a minimum contribution. I believe it's $200 in the year 2019. So the minimum contribution to a Roth is 200 and then the maximums are again six or seven thousand, depending on your age. Now, again, we said that distributions are tax free, including the earnings. And I should say something about the earnings. So we say we contribute to a Roth. Uh, there are a couple of different kinds, and we, we stated at the beginning that the IRA, the word IRA, can either mean uh, individual retirement account or individual retirement annuity. So if it is a retirement annuity, um, it could be a fixed annuity, it could be a variable annuity. Uh, if it is a fixed annuity, then presumably you have some contractual rate that you're being paid in that, in that instrument. Uh, if it is a variable annuity, then presumably the amount of return you get is going to be dependent at least in part on uh, your um, investment experience in the market. And so there may not be any earnings in a Roth IRA. There's no guarantee in a market-connected instrument that it's going to have any earnings at all. But in the case of you make a contribution, let's say you put 6000 in, and then that account earns, let's say, four or $500 in a given year, uh, then you do not get a 1099 on that. It grows tax-deferred. So as long as the account, as long as the time, there's a, there's a timetable on how long you have had to have the Roth in force. Um, now, the, the idea is a person might have multiple Roth IRAs. So from the first deposit of the first Roth that you open, there has to be a five-year period between that deposit and the time you make your withdrawal. But once you withdraw funds, if you're, if you're over 59 and a half, and if you have had that Roth open for five years, then you get any earnings tax-free, which means that you're not going to be charged tax down the road. You're going to have distributions that will come to you uh, tax-free. Now, there are also exceptions. For example, if the owner of the account dies or is permanently disabled, uh, then money can be withdrawn from the Roth without penalty. Additionally, there is a, a $10,000 uh, first-time homebuyer allowance, and it, it's somewhat peculiar in the, in the wording in terms of what is counted as a first-time homebuyer. Um, it is a maximum, it was a lifetime cap at $10,000. Um, whether or not, again, it's a good idea to take $10,000 or any amount from your Roth is going to depend on your particular situation. I mean, it's possible some people might fund the Roth just to make a down payment, and then it's possible that a person might just think uh, that they have no other uh, place to draw the money from. Um, but if you have um, this uh, come up, it, you might want to discuss it with uh, your a financial advisor or with, uh, with somebody who can help you to determine whether or not taking the money from your Roth is a good idea. Now, for tax-qualified instruments, a withdrawal prior to age 59 is going to elicit a penalty, and the, penal uh, the penalty is basically 10% of whatever amount is taxable. So as we just said, in a Roth, you can withdraw your um, contributions at any time for any reason. So you're not penalized for withdrawing contributions, but if you withdraw earnings from a Roth and you are younger than 59 or uh, the Roth has not been open for long enough, you can leave yourself open up to uh, taxation or to penalty or both. So if you're younger than 59, you're opening yourself up to a penalty. And if you're over 59, you're opening yourself up to taxation if you withdraw the funds from the Roth uh, prior to having had it open for five years. But there is what's called an ordering in terms of how the IRS um, uh, counts money that comes out of a Roth. So once you put money into it, 
when you pull money out, the uh, IRS basically treats the first money you take out as a recovery of your cost basis. So the first money that comes out of a Roth is your contribution. If you've done any conversions into the Roth, those are counted next. And finally, the earnings come out. Now, there are also in retirement accounts, um, some retirement accounts have what's called a required minimum distribution. And that is going to apply to things like a traditional IRA or to a uh, employer-sponsored plan like a 401k. Once you hit the age of 70 and a half, the Internal Revenue Service starts to require that you take money out. But in the vehicles that primarily have this uh, required minimum distribution or RMD attached to them, those are vehicles that have never been taxed. So in an IRA or in a 401k, the money you put into that vehicle has never been taxed. And so the Internal Revenue Service basically says, well, look, you can't keep your retirement investments or retirement savings in these accounts indefinitely. And their perspective is we have provided you with some tax benefits and some uh, tax preferential treatment on this money and you have been in your retirement presumably for several years and if you haven't touched it you're going to have to start settling up some of the tax. Now having said that that's what an RMD is and I have a video entirely devoted to sort of getting into the RMD and explaining it a little more in depth but suffice it to say that with a Roth IRA there is no required minimum distribution for the account owner while he or she is alive and the reason for it is is that the structure of the Roth, again, is such that you pay tax on the money going in. So it's already been taxed. And if the Roth owner fulfills the requirements of having it open for five years and being over 59 and a half, then the distribution is tax-free. So there is no money for the IRS to get in the Roth if the account uh, passes those tests. So there is no required uh, distribution from a Roth um, in the same way as there would be from a, uh, an IRA or a 401k. The only exception is when the Roth is held within a 401k, and in those cases, that's kind of a specialized case, uh, there may be a required minimum distribution, but it will be, um, it, it may be not, it may be um, that even though it is in principle uh, required, there's no tax that is actually owed, uh, but that's kind of a, of a different case. We're talking here about a, an, an IRA that you would just, a Roth IRA that you would just open um, on your own, apart from any employer plan. Now, uh, similarly, because the IRS only gets money on contributions, they permit contributions to continue to go into the Roth even after the age of 70 and a half, uh, provided that you are still uh, uh, receiving earned income. Now, one other word on required minimum distributions. I said that the account owner does not have to take required minimum distributions. If the account owner dies, then the beneficiary of that Roth um, will have to take required minimum distributions. Uh, in most cases, there are certain conditions under which, let's say, a spouse can assume ownership of the uh, deceased spouse's uh, account without there being a taxable event. But in some cases, the beneficiary is going to have to start taking required minimum distributions, and they may not owe any tax on that. There may not be any tax, but they're at least going to have to start drawing from the account. And once again, just to be clear, uh, for a Roth IRA, that five-year time clock starts from the time you open the, your first Roth and contribute to it. That time clock starts. So if you have one Roth that you open up this year and then another you open up five years from now, uh, contributions you put into that Roth are also going to be covered uh, by the time clock that was started on the very first Roth that you opened. Um, now, Roth conversions are handled differently. Every Roth conversion is essentially going to have its own five-year time clock, so each one of those is going to be handled differently. Uh, it gets a bit tricky, but the main outlines of the Roth IRA are basically uh, helpful to contrast it with the traditional IRA. So, traditional IRA, you are giving a deduction on the money you put in, gross tax deferred, and then your tax when it comes out. With a Roth, you are taxed on the money that goes in. That is to say, you do not get a deduction. It grows tax deferred. And then if the account has been open for five years, and again, you're over 59 and a half, when you make the withdrawal, your withdrawal will be tax-free, including the earnings. I appreciate your time today. I hope that something that I said uh, is a bit helpful to you. As we think through these issues, I would invite you to check out other videos that I have. I have other videos on traditional IRAs, on uh, employer-sponsored plans, on uh, life insurance and its use in retirement planning, for example, for what's called a life insurance retirement plan or a LERP, um, and just a couple of other resources. 
If you found something helpful, please like the video. It does uh, help with respect to YouTube's uh, ranking uh, system. And uh, I invite you again to, to join me for future videos. I thank you so much, and I hope you have a good day.